Okay, hello everybody. So in this tutorial, I am going to show you all how to build this web-based interactive stock analyzer dashboard. Um, so in this dashboard, you will be able to select a ticker symbol from the S&P 500 stocks, and it will dynamically load a number of charts based on the ticker symbol. So here you can see um, at the top, we're showing the historical price over time. Um, down here in the bottom right, we're showing the return history over uh, multiple time periods of the selected stock. And then in the bottom left, we're actually showing the um, sub-industry performance of the information technology um, or the subsector of the selected stock. So in this case, that's information technology, and we're showing the, how, the performance of the different subsectors. Um, and so how we're going to build this um, is first we're going to need to find all of these tickers. So the way we're going to do that is we are going to scrape actually this list of ticker symbols on Wikipedia. Um, so we're going to be using the RVEST package and we're going to load in this data table and that's going to give us the ticker symbols for the S&P 500 component stocks. Um, and once we load in these tickers, then we're going to go ahead over to Yahoo Finance Right? And we're going to go to the historical data section and we're going to download actually dynamically all of the historical data um, that underlies these charts. Then we're going to build out these charts in ggplot2. And then we're going to build the dashboard using the shiny library. So I really hope you guys enjoy the tutorial um, and let's get started. Okay, so to get started, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to File Explorer and we are going to start a new directory. I'm going to call it Stock Anal Analyzer. Um, and so now we're going to go back to our, our studio session and we are going to navigate to that newly created folder. So if you hit the three dots over here, that'll give you a File Explorer. Navigate to that folder that you just created and open that up. Now we're going to hit this more button here, drop that down, set as working directory. The first thing I usually do is copy out this set wd function and put it in my script. So the next thing we need to do um, in this project is to actually load the information about the top stocks. So the ticker symbols and some metadata about the stocks. And the way we're going to do that is we are going to, um, rather than type in each ticker symbol for the stocks that we want to grab the historical data from. We are actually going to scrape Wikipedia and bring in an already populated um, table of the S&P 500. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull up a browser, go to Google, and we're going to type S&P 500 constituents. One of the first hits you get should be a Wikipedia um, article for the list of S&P 500 component stocks. So this is a table, right, and it has each of the symbols for all 500 components of the S&P 500, and it has the name of the company and some metadata about the, the company itself. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy out the URL from this web page. And we are going to store it in a variable called S&P 500 URL. And we're going to store it in quotes. Um, then the next thing we're going to do is to actually scrape this data and bring it into our R session. We need a library called RVEST. And if you don't have RVEST installed, the function is install dot packages. And then in quotes, you're going to put the name of the package you need to install. So that's our best. I'm not going to run this because I already have it installed. And we're also going to bring in the dplyr package. So now to bring in that data table into our R session, what we are going to do is we are going to type S&P 500. And I'm going to type this out first, and then I'll explain exactly what's happening we are going to use the function read HTML. And inside, the first argument is going to be the URL that we saved into SMP 500 URL. OK, and then so we're going to use the piping function. And if you don't remember what the piping function is or have never seen it before, I'd highly recommend going to my channel and watching the basic data manipulation in our video I put together. It covers um, some functions in dplyr, tidyr, 
and it covers the um, the piping function, which the shortcut for this is Control Shift M. So I'd highly recommend checking that out because the, the functions I cover in that video are functions that I use all the time. So they really help you follow these tutorials. Um, so the next function we're going to write is HTML node, and then inside of here we're going to put quotes and the word table, and we're going to use another piping function, Control Shift M, and we are going to write the function HTML table. And then once that's typed out, we're going to hit Control Enter to send it down to our console. And now while that runs, okay, so we now have a new data data frame within our global environment called SMP 500. It has 505 observations and nine variables. So it has 505 observations because the S&P 500 doesn't always have exactly 500 components, um, and currently it has 505. So that is why you're seeing more than 500. Uh, but you can see if you open, if you click it, that'll open it up in our viewer, and you can see that it is the table from Wikipedia that we were just looking at. And so what is actually happening in this function? Um, so first, let's just do a quick overview of um, the piping operator, just as a quick reminder. So another way we could have written this function um, without the piping operator is, well actually, so first let's just say the, what the piping operator is, is anything left of the pipe is going to go into the first argument of anything that is to the right of the pipe. So in this case, we have read HTML. That would be the first argument of HTML node. And then we have another pipe over here. So remember, anything left of the pipe is going in as the first argument in whatever is right of the pipe. So this would be how we would have written this function had we not used the piping function. So you can see this is really, really hard to read and to look at, whereas this is actually much easier to follow the steps. And um, so what we're actually doing, I'm going to get rid of this. So what we're actually doing up here is read HTML is going, it's navigating to the URL that is inside the first argument, and it is reading the HTML of that page. So if you actually go to the Wikipedia page, right click and hit view page source, you can actually see the underlying HTML code that is populating that page. So that is what this first argument is doing. That's uh, this first function is doing. And now the second function is finding all of the HTML tags that are labeled table. So if we go back to the Wikipedia page and we hit Control F and we type um, less than symbol table, right? That'll take us to all of the table tabs. And you can see on this page there's only one table tab, um, and it is the table of the data that we needed to pull. So it's a little hard to read, but you can see things that look like the data we pulled. So you can see 3M company. You can see Abbott Labs. You can see, um, right, you can see that they're in the healthcare business um, and so on. You can see all the different tickers and all of the different companies um, within this HTML file. And that's what's actually being read into our R session. And then the next function, HTML table, is actually parsing out that HTML and converting it into a data frame. So that's how we're going from um, this URL to this nice clean data table within our R session. So now the next thing we'll notice um, actually by looking at this data frame is a couple of things. So the first thing is that some of these columns we don't need, so we need to get rid of. So we don't need SEC filings. We don't need date first added. We don't need this security CIK um, indicator, and we don't need um, the founding date. So we're gonna get rid of those columns. And also you'll see that in some of the names of these columns, their spaces. R does not like it when there's names in your um, data frame headers. So we're going to rename um, these columns as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to type SP 500, SP 500, and then we're going to use the piping symbol again. And we're going to use a function from dplyr called select. And we are going to select symbol. And actually, that doesn't need to be quotes, so symbol security gix sector and so you'll notice that gix sector since it has a space in it 
we need to let R know that this is actually the name of a column, and we do that by using the back quote, which is actually the symbol underneath the tilde or at the top left of your keyboard. So then we're going to load in Gix subindustry, same thing with the back quote, and we're going to load in um, headquarters, headquarter location. So let's take those five columns. So I'm going to hit Control Enter to send that to the console. And now if I open up my data frame, you can see we have the same five columns that we just subsetted in this select function. So now um, we need to rename the column names. So to do that, we're going to say names S&P 500 equals name. Actually, we're going to say a ticker name sector industry and we'll say HQ location control enter now if you reopen up the data frame again you can see that we have all the same columns but this time with different names so now let's save out this um, data frame and we'll use the function save S&P 500 file equals in quotes, we'll say SP 500.r data. Control enter. And now you can see we have an R data file in our directory. And if we go over to Windows Explorer and we go into the stock analyzer folder that we created in the beginning of this video, we can see that we now have an SP 500.r data file within this directory. Um, so that's it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. If you liked it, remember to subscribe. And in the next video, we're going to cover actually getting all of the data. So all the historical stock data for the names. So for all 505 of these tickers that are in this S&P 500 data set. Thanks, guys.